We practice more than anybody in the country, for real. But uh, in coaching that long, this team was really a roadmap for me in uh, determining how to develop a program or try to, how do you have a championship team? You know, I really think it was a roadmap for me because this team had intangibles. You know, it had things like mutual respect between the coaches and the athletes, respect for the university itself, athletes that cared about each other and about the success of each other, found out as a young guy, hey, this ain't about you, man. This ain't just about you. That whole lesson, life lesson, which, you know, every good business team family, uh, that, that, that's how it operates. That, that, that's the success formula. I realized that we had a wrestling family here, which included the boosters, the fans that helped fill that West Gym. I can remember one day, my uh, junior year, CP brought me in to, and said, hey, some, got some good news and some bad news. And because uh, I want to talk to say something about this West Gym. And he, I said, what, what is it? He said, you got picked to be able to be in the all-star meet. I go, wow. He said, well, I said, what's the bad news? He said, the bad news is the same night as the Iowa meet. I said, I don't want to go to the all-star meet. I don't want to go. So you got to go. And so everybody talked about how cool that was. I wasn't there. <laughs> I wasn't there. <laughs> I wasn't there. But something cool happened because at the all-star meet was in Stillwater. And I was with, I was rooming with a guy named Jan Sanderson who was, the, he was on the Iowa team. So he missed it too. Jan Sanderson missed it. He was on the Iowa team and there was a guy, his buddy, named Lee Peterson who was a North Dakota State guy. And so after the meet, we ate and then they went out. But at you and I, after Halloween, you didn't go out. Okay? And our team with Chuck Patton, Halloween, that's it. You didn't go out. There wasn't no party. These guys, this was February 1st or something, they were out. And I had kidded Jan Sanderson because we flew out together about the meet. I said, hey, I think we can get, I think we can get you. He laughed. He laughed. But at about 1 o'clock in the morning, I had called home. I called, well, first I called, I was living with Ken Snyder and Cunningham, and I called and said, hey, how'd that meet go? We beat the Hawkeyes, man! We beat the, I go, no way! I called home my sweet mom, Hazel. She was 4'9", let me remember my mom, Hazel. I called home and she talked, she went to the meet. She talked for 10 minutes, didn't even ask how I did in the All-Star meet. <laughs> But the best part was when Jan Sanderson and Lee Peterson came in about 1 a.m., he goes, hey, hey, Miller, how'd that meet turn out? Because back then we had no social media. He didn't know. I, uh, we only beat you 17 to 15. <laughs> then he jumps on me. He said, you're lying, you're lying. I go, no, dude. I went through, he made me go through the whole lineup. And Lee Peterson, this is the best part, this guy was North Dakota State who was our arch rival. He goes, I told you, Sanderson, they get you in that damn West Gym, that's what happens. <laughs> Two things I didn't touch on. I also found out, I know how impactful the head coach is, but I also found out here how impactful, how important having great assistant coaches are. Mike McCready was an inspiration to me and our team. Here's a guy, most of us didn't weren't state champs when they got to come to Northern Iowa. Here's a guy that wasn't a state champ, but became one of the best guys in the nation. And went on beyond that freestyle wise. And uh, he was very impactful, as, just as an example that, hey, you don't have to be, be, be a state champion to be great. And then just how he led his life was a really inspiration for so many. <clears throat> And then Briggsy, I mean, there's a guy that was, when I say here's a guy, I want our team to be all in, that's Briggsy. That guy was all in. He would, there was nothing he wouldn't do for anybody on the team. I mean, I know that guy wasn't making much money. I mean, the guy started out living in a real shack, a, a converted chicken coop, I think. I think he hunted for his food. But... But Briggsy was on cloud nine just coaching. This was really 
impactful for me. Just go to because one time he said, no boy, this really isn't a real job. You kidding me? I'm not making much, but don't tell anybody I do it for free. <laughs> and he's acting like he was getting over on the university. Like. <laughs> it was awesome. But his, the lesson was do something you love and it'll all work out. Do something you love. Find your passion and it will all work out. And I'm going to end with this. I'm, I was a wrestling coach for 37 years, 30 at the college level. And I look back amazed at how Chuck Patton did all this. I counted 48 guys on that team in that picture. He taught full time at the same time, taught full time. Had a runner, and I'm probably missing some stuff, but this is off the top of my head. Had a runner's group in the morning. People from the community, maybe some in here, would meet in the morning to go in a runner's group. I'd come in and work out. These guys were done running, eating, drinking coffee, talking. Had a, had a noon booster club for people on campus and had an off-campus booster club for people in the community. Fundraising, recruiting. I mean, when I go recruiting, I'd go and sit. I'd go to a tournament, and maybe it's a freestyle tournament or whatever in the spring and summer. I'd sit in the stands, and I'd watch some of the kids, and I'd go get a Coke, and I'd watch, and I'd leave when I want to. Chuck Patton worked all these tournaments. He actually went to recruit. He actually worked the tournament. Service projects. I remember our team painted a house in four hours one time. I don't know how good a freight job that was. <laughs> we painted a house in four hours. Set up chairs for events. Set up for our own meets. And, uh, but also, one of the lessons for me, he had opportunities to leave and did. He had opportunities to leave and did. So thank you for staying. And last of all, I just want to say I know this I know our team loved being Panthers. We love putting on a purple and gold, man. We competed with pride as a team, and we love coming into the West Gym to compete for our fans in university. And uh, I know Mark's here, Coach Swab. Keep doing it, man. You brought it back. If you haven't been to a meet, get there. Hope you make it today, because there's a lot of pride and energy in that West Gym, again. So, and thanks for the honor, Troy. Thank you for the honor for our team. I know we're very proud of it. I'm proud to be a part of it as all of you are. So thanks a lot.